thank you for joining us for today's Con Echo Series 2017. Uh, this is being produced by Paramax Films with Moon West in cooperation with our strategic partners, HP and HP Studio. I'd like to thank all our guests today for joining us, and in particular to note that our program is focused on the innovative strategies that are bridging the gap between unique storytelling and the financial resources to bring them to the big screen. I'd like to turn it over now to our moderator for today, uh, Kirsty Bell, who is the managing uh, director and is also founder of Goldfinch Entertainment. Thank you, and thank you everybody for coming today. Um, my name's Kirsty Bell, and I am the founder and managing director of Goldfinch Entertainment, which also incorporates BB88, which is a production company, and BBF, which is Bird Box Finance, which is a tax credit and uh, pre-sale financier. Uh, Goldfinch was founded uh, three and a half years ago um, with, the, with the desire to help make and distribute commercially independent films, both in the UK and internationally. Um, I'm pleased to say that uh, our team uh, has gone from strength to strength and we've added other arms to our business, so the members of the team are in the audience today. And one of the things that we wanted to talk about at this, uh, this session and with the panelists here was about how we can get films made and out there in a more economic but also in a faster fashion. So one of the first topics that we've got, and I'd like each of the panel members to introduce themselves uh, to you, is to talk about um, the future of the pre-sale and also other areas of film financing that are coming out um, over the last year or so, different forms of financing. So would you like to introduce yourself, please? Yes, uh, my name is Jing Kai. I'm from Silver Media Group, uh, but I'm here representing Aurora Media Holdings. So Aurora Media Holdings is a new film fund that was set up uh, just last year. And uh, just over the last few months, we really invested in a variety of content, from movies to TV, animation to live action, uh, with budget ranges from 10 million to anything below a million. And uh, so we are private equity financing company, uh, so we always believe that uh, in the potential of the Asian market, uh, so that's about 3 billion people in Asia alone, and then with growing population, fast-growing economy as well. Uh, and of course, Asia is very open to world content. And so the kind of content that we invest in uh, would be content from all parts of the world and not just in Asia, but really how we can bring Asian content to the rest of the world and the rest of the world content to Asia. So that's what we do. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Freddy Gorchon. I'm a producer. I was actually uh, working for the studios for about uh, 10 years, uh, various studios, Warner, Columbia, Paramount. And uh, in the last few years, I've been more of an independent producer, uh, so dealing definitely with a lot of international sales company, uh, trying to get uh, pre-sale, uh, for movies. Before, my movies were more in the 10 to $20 million range. Now, making movies more in the 3 to $10 million range. And uh, I'm sure we'll talk about a lot of things, but one of the things about pre-sales is you have to have a cast and you have to have a director of some note. And, uh, and obviously, in terms of new financing, as you know, in the States, we have Netflix, we have Amazon, we have a lot of new players uh, that have been contributing a lot to the independent financing. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mark Hofstadter. I'm the head of film and creative for the crowdfunding platform Indiegogo. Uh, we were founded in 2008, and since then we've raised a billion dollars, over a billion dollars, uh, for creators uh, and entrepreneurs uh, around the globe. Uh, previously here at, uh, at Khan, uh, we've had, uh, last year we had the premiere of Alejandro Jodorowsky's Endless Poetry, which was uh, partially funded on Indiegogo. Uh, previously, we've had um, Steve James's documentary about Roger Ebert, Life Itself, uh, as well as many others. Uh, we sort of fit into, I would say, the pre-sale model to some degree in that um, many filmmakers and producers are coming to Indiegogo uh, before they perhaps even enter uh, a conversation with a private equity financier uh, to prove that there is a market, that there is an audience for their film while also raising a portion of their budget along the way and thus making a little, you know, speeding the process on a little bit faster. 
Hello, my name is uh, Dmitry Litvinov. I am a head of company Planeta Inform and uh, I am from Russia. Uh, we produce uh, a lot of uh, special uh, genre movie like horror and uh, some comedies. And also uh, we distribute uh, all big Russian blockbusters uh, uh, which we uh, which produced another company in Russia to foreign markets uh, and uh, we have the uh, distribu uh, di distribution company and also we uh, publishing uh, the main uh, uh, B2B magazine uh, about the uh, movie business and the TV markets in Russia. Uh, that's all. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dimitri. So the first question that I'd, um, I'd like to ask uh, of all of you is, should pre-sales form part of a budget when you're trying to get greenlit for your movie? And if they are part of the budget, what percentage of that budget should it represent? Jin? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, it really all depends on the budget range. So, for example, looking at uh, our recent investments, we made a... Uh, $1 million film or $1.5 million film without any pre-sale, but that's also because it's a small budget film. Uh, but we also invested in a $10 million film where a bulk of it comes from pre-sale and then also at the same time, uh, there's some incentives. So in the end, the equity, the risk money is only 10%, so it's only a million. So really, it depends on the kind of budget. Small films, we don't require pre-sales, but big, sale, uh, big films, we want to make sure that our risks are mitigated through other means. Okay, so Frederick, what, what do you think about the market out there? We're at Cannes at the moment, and it's where everybody's coming together, not just for the festival, but it's a market. Do you think the activity in the market is active in the pre-sale market? Or do you think you've got to have your finished product from an independent point of view before you can sell it? No, I think it's a good question. Uh, I think that pre-sales have become very difficult. I think people are, have a tougher time pre-selling their movies. Um, I think if you want to get some pre-sales before, obviously, you start the movie in Cannes, you have to have some names. You have to have a name actor or name actress or both. You have to have a director of some note. Otherwise, I think pre-sales are very small these days. So in that case, if you have a smaller movie, like he was mentioning, and you don't have major names, you really should have an equity investor and maybe you have some subsidies, and then once the movie is finished, you bring it to Cannes. Okay, thank you. So, so turn to you, Mark. Obviously, um, Indiegogo, you are one of the new alternative finance models out there. So how have you seen pre-sales fitting into your raises? Yeah, it's interesting because we do work very closely with the, with the talent and literary agencies, um, with their filmmakers and producers, finding ways to get the projects off the ground. And, um, you know, right now, actually, more importantly, I think in relevant, uh, relevance to what you're talking about, we are working more and more with the sales agencies um, because for them, uh, it helps, um, it helps the, the sales agencies bring more attention to the projects. So when they bring those films to market for pre-sales, suddenly there's this greater level of buzz. Um, you know, we, we've worked uh, um, with a number of the sales agencies in the States, and now we're starting to, to work uh, with, with companies like Xantropa and others here uh, in Europe. Um, and really, it, it, it works side by side. Um, we help you, we help the pre-sales, and the pre-sales help us. Okay. And Dimitri, um, from, from your perspective, from your company's perspective, is pre-sale an important part of the package that you're putting together your projects? В России немного по-другому устроена система финансирования из-за того, что у нас бюджеты на картины не очень большие. Мы рассчитываем... So the system in Russia works a little differently, uh, which means that the budgets are generally smaller. In, in, in Мы uh, рассчитываем получать преселы исключительно на, uh, на большие картины, uh, которые, пол, uh, жанр которых пользуется спросом на международных рынках. Definitely 
before the movie uh, was uh, uh, completed. Uh, that's why. So, so it's on we, have, we have only contracts, but we don't have money. Uh, that's why. Um, uh, that's why we uh, form the budget uh, uh, without uh, pre-sales here. So the pre-sales payable on delivery, is that what you're saying, Dimitri? Uh, y yes, so the, the, it, it's signed b before the movie is made, but the actual money comes so, in only So later. do you use that contract and yeah. forward lend off that? So yes, would you loan off uh, that contract? Um, uh, yes, we, we, uh, we have the contract, but we, we don't have the money. The, we have the uh, money on the paper, that's why. Yeah, okay. Right, so, so this is where the, the finance element fits, fits into the jigsaw here, because obviously if you have a pre-sale contract, you can forward lend, some organisations do. Um, so moving on from that, Jin, what other forms of finance are, are you looking for when you're looking for the equity or the gap in any of the projects? Uh, well, uh, actually for a fund or both, most private funds, what we look is whatever makes the most commercial sense. Of yeah. course, we love a good story. We want to watch a great movie in the end. Uh, but it's always what makes the most commercial sense. So the fund uh, that we have is deployed in multiple ways. Uh, so far, most of the way we have deployed it is through equity investments. Uh, but we are always willing to uh, monetize papers like government incentives or good pre-sale papers uh, because that's again another way that the fund can make money. Uh, but of course, in the end, we weigh, we weigh against uh, the potential uh, and the risk factor of the film, uh, whether we want to take a bigger risk uh, for a bigger uh, windfall, hopefully, uh, by taking equity investment or just to play a safer game by monetizing those papers. So, with regard to your fund, do you look at jurisdictions that have better tax incentives in them? Do you, do you, do you actively piece together co-productions or, or other, other parties that might come in where they have got 40%, you know, like Australia or whatever? Yeah. Well, we, uh, we, we do some of the assembling of the other pieces mm -hmm. sometimes, uh, but that will only be for projects we're more passionate about. But most of the times, we expect the producers to come with the other pieces in place, and then we will come in with equity. So usually, the equity people want to come in, okay, have the rest in place, and we'll come in in the end, right? Uh, but for projects we're really passionate about, yeah, okay, we really love this script, let me help you bring the other pieces together. So we do that sometimes. Okay, thank you. Frederick, how do you see the finance plans coming together if pre-sales aren't a part of it? So, so definitely now, more and more, we're looking for tax credits, you know, whether it's Canada, obviously in the States you have quite a lot of uh, different uh, states that give tax credit. Um, the other venue obviously that has existed forever and, and keeps on, on growing is co-productions. Yeah. Uh, co-productions obviously are mainly in Europe. And then a lot of people now are trying to do co-financing, co-production. I'm not sure how to define it because it's a, it's a kind of a difficult um, kind of scenario, but uh, with China because China is financing a lot of movies, so a lot of people are trying to qualify for Chinese co-production or Chinese co-financing. Okay, our production arm has funding from China. Uh, yeah, and, um, yeah, and I'm involved a little bit with the Chinese uh, industry, so I, I've been working on that a little bit. Okay, so Mark, what, what jurisdictions, you said you're moving more, you just focused on the US, and now you're moving over to Europe. What do you see happening in the future with the well, financing? Well, actually, we, uh, um, we've been available uh, worldwide since 2008. So, uh, but, of course, with, much, um, with many new things, especially when a company like ours originates in the United States, uh, definitely uh, sort of the, the strongest uh, part of our audience comes from North America. Uh, but as you know, we've seen the ups and downs uh, across Europe and, and uh, in Asia and Australia in terms of um, either government funding or just markets globally uh, in terms of financing. Um, what we've really been seeing is we've been seeing an, an, an upsurge in um, uh, the, uh, the films that are coming through Europe, um, much more organic uh, uh, films. Uh, and one of the things that we've, we introduced uh, to uh, our, our customers, rather our filmmakers and producers more recently, uh, is the idea that they can actually raise equity on that's Indiegogo. What, that's, yeah, that's my yeah. next question. Yeah, so, so we launched that at the very end of last year. Uh, the first film that launched was a, a horror anthology film 
uh, produced by a New Zealand producer named Ant Timpson and uh, an American producer named Tim League, who's also the CEO of Alamo Drafthouse, the movie theater chain in the States. And uh, they were trying to raise $500,000 in equity uh, for their film, which included uh, a marketing budget as well. Uh, and they raised that $500,000 in about three weeks. Um, and they're already in production. Um, and we've got about five or six more films that are going through the process. Uh, and those films can be international films. They can be um, uh, foreign producers and foreign filmmakers and foreign films uh, to the States. Uh, the only requirement that our government has is that uh, to partake in that equity funding on Indiegogo, uh, they do have to be incorporated in the United States. But, yeah. but that's, that's, for most producers, that's pretty easy. That's really interesting. So, Dimitri, with, with regard to your business, um, how do you see that uh, operating on a worldwide scene financially? So, would you deliberately uh, film uh, in a jurisdiction where you're going to get uh, extensive tax credits from the, from the government, you know, financing from the government, or would that, would that alter your view at all? Окей. Okay. Uh, исторически сложилось, что в основном основной бюджет на производство картин, если мы говорим как и о жанровых картинах, так и артовых, в России дает государство. Uh, so again, historically in, in Russia, uh, the majority of films are funded uh, through governmental support. That's the main source of finance. Вот, поэтому вторая часть, естественно, если мы говорим о жанровых картинах, основ, основной источник дохода, который, ну, как бы инвестирование, да, это также телеканалы и предпродажи на локальные интернет-платформы. Uh, но в связи с тем, что курс рубля в последнее время ослаб, международные продажи стали также нам интересны, потому как они стали формировать порядка до 20% общего бюджета картины на определенные большие жанровые истории. It changed the landscape uh, quite significantly, uh, and uh, for big uh, genre films, like historical films, in the international market is, has become more important recently. Что касается копродакшена, то сейчас только-только uh, некоторые наши продюсеры пытаются это настроить, но в основном это происходит именно на какие-то uh, артхаусные картины. Ну, допустим, uh, вот Звягинцев, который вчера показывали, он был сделан в копродукции с, с французскими компаниями. Uh, Uh, so co-production uh, usually works for art house films on sm smaller projects. For example, Andrei Zvyagintsev's uh, film that was uh, screened y yesterday uh, was co-produced with France. That's very interesting. So you're very much working globally now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So the, the last thing I'd like to pose to the, the panel is that um, what is, uh, if, if pre-sales are, um, the, the death of pre-sales effectively, or the inability to monetize pre-sales is out there, do you think the film finance, the way that films are financed now, it's a very buoyant in, you know, activity? I mean, Mark, you, you, you must have seen so much go through on Indiegogo over the last couple of years, yeah, it's, it's it's not. Um, I mean, it hasn't slowed down. It's 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 shifted. Um, the the project's becoming more and more sophisticated, and that's sort of why I, I mentioned we're talking to the sales agents, and we're seeing a lot more co-productions um, by more not just established filmmakers, but veteran producers who are are, are realizing that there's um, to use the American term. There's more than one way to skin a cat, um, and um, Yeah, especially now with the, the interest in the equity side of, of, of financing on Indiegogo, um, we're really sort of seeing that level of interest coming in from very sort of high-level individuals. And when I say that high-level, I mean veteran filmmakers and producers who have very lengthy resumes um, and quite simply want to keep creative control, which is something they can still do through Indiegogo, whereas when they go through other elements, they may not have as much control, but with Indiegogo, they'll always have that control. Okay. What do you think about that, Frederick? Do you think it's, it's a positive thing for the independent market at the moment? Because we've seen a massive increase in projects in Goldfinch. You mean in, uh, in, you 
You mean in uh, crowdfunding and stuff like that? The alternative ways of getting it financed without the pre-sale? Yeah, I mean, definitely, you know, the, there's quite a bit. Obviously, cable is doing more. You have more VOD, like I was mentioning before. You have uh, Netflix, you have uh, Amazon. Uh, one thing we didn't talk about that still, I think, is out there a little bit is uh, television pre-sale, even for yeah. feature films. You know, we, we still have some major... Uh, television in Germany, for example, in France. TV, you know, it still contributes a lot. Obviously, in France, you have Canal Plus, who is still a pretty good ingredient. They slow down, but quite, quite a bit. But it's true that there is always new, new financing coming to to the film business, and and a lot of different um, funds who are created who are tax credits or uh, tax oriented. That's very good. And Jen, you must have seen an increase in people. I mean, with being a relatively new fund, you must have seen an awful lot of independent projects come across your desk. Uh, yeah, uh, a lot of independent projects, uh, some uh, projects on the mini majors as well. Uh, but what's common is that whether independent or non-independent, uh, people are looking for more money nowadays. Budgets are getting bigger and more people are into wanting to produce content. Uh, so, so definitely we welcome, as a, as a fund, we welcome uh, collaboration with any other forms of money, whether it's through crowdfunding or through pre-sales or through incentives. Uh, the goal is always how, uh, as a producer, how you can pull the different pieces together. And I think the challenge for producers is to really not just look at what's, how business has always been done, right? Uh, I used to do this, this and that, but then the world is changing so quickly and we need to really look at uh, how pre-sales has changed, how incentives have changed, uh, how private equity is actually uh, increasing nowadays uh, and how crowdfunding has come in and, and really changed the whole landscape as well. So I think the producers really need to be nimble on their feet in how they find the money to make the projects happen. Jim, that's exactly what I was going to say to tie everything up. Yes. Um, okay. I mean, what I think each of you has demonstrated on the, on the panel here today is that you've got to have ability to change and move and move with either... Um, uh, the value of the currency that you deal in and whether that currency is actual um, cash or whether it's through papering deals or using uh, platforms like Indiegogo or looking at the TV set or speaking to new funds that are emerging, it doesn't really matter. And our, our experience in our business is that producers fail to change. So inability to change, inability for sales agents to change and look at other ways of getting the projects on their book is very, very, very important. So um, thank you all for being on my panel today. And uh, I, th I hope it was very interesting for you out there in the audience. And so let's thank the panel, please. Thanks. <laughs>